Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make a gold and XP farm that uses a single max size portal and it is using the portal ticking mechanic which allows zombie pigmen or zombified piglins to spawn faster when you turn the portal on and off real quick. This design right here is like I said using one portal so instead of my four portal design this is a single one but it tries to maximize what a single portal can output in order to make sure that you're getting the most value out of your build. And as you can see, all of these zombified piglins are dying pretty quickly. We're killing them with a trident killer, a great feature of Minecraft Bedrock Edition. And that will allow us to get XP and looting drops with no interaction whatsoever. So you can just let it sit and you're done with it. In total, this farm will yield you about 1700 gold ingots per hour. That is including the gold nuggets that you craft into gold ingots and including the golden swords that the zombified piglins drop since you can smelt each golden sword into a golden nugget. And that is equivalent to about 26.8 stacks of gold ingots. It will also yield you 8800 rotten flesh which is about 137 stacks per hour and it will also yield you 37700 xp per hour which is about 108 and a half levels, or about 2.2 minutes to get to level 30. That's about all you need to know about this farm. It's a rather simple build, so let's get into the tutorial. So before I show you the materials list and how to build this farm, let me quickly run you through how to actually use it. So what you want to start with is opening the kill chamber, throwing in your trident, and closing the door. If you leave it open, you'll have a bit of trouble. Then you want to turn on the trident killer first, and then you turn on the farm, which is this lever right here. All of these zombified piglets will spawn and they will drop in here. While you're using the farm, what you want to do is stand right up to this block, and you want to be holding your looting three swords. And the reason you want to stand right up to this block is so that you can pick up all of the experience. You should be able to pick all of it up if you're just standing right up to this block because all of the XP will just go through this block. Also, while this farm is in use, make sure to not leave the game or go too far away from it. You want to turn it off before you leave it, because if you don't, then the farm will break. When you're done with using the farm, you want to make sure to first turn off the portal. And only when all the zombified piglins are gone, only then you want to turn off the trident killer. Otherwise there might be extra zombified piglins in there and that will not be very convenient. And that is for the simple reason that the trident only links to the player that threw it. Which means if another player wants to use the trident killer, or the gold farm for that matter, they have to pick up the trident and re-throw it. That about covers the usage of this farm, so let's get into the build guide. You will want the following materials for the gold farm. I do want to point out that all of the glass can be replaced by any solid block and all of these quartz blocks can also be any other solid block. So you could build it out of cobble, you could build it out of basalt, you could build it out of dirt, whatever you want. These are obsidian blocks. You can't make the portal any smaller because you do actually need the full sized portal to get the same amount of piglin spawns as I'm getting. The sword can be a sword of any type, as long as it has the looting 3 enchantment. The buttons and the doors can be of any type, although maybe not an iron door because you won't be able to open it by hand. And the hoppers and chests are just for the super small storage that I'm going to be covering in this video. It is not a storage that is adequate for this farm, so you may have to design your own or find somebody else's design. Before we start building, one last important info about placement of the gold farm. If you're planning to build multiple of this gold farm, or you have similar gold farms nearby, you want to make sure that you properly space it. If you don't know what chunks are, then ideally you want to place the farm around 20 blocks away from any other similar gold farm, or maybe even any large redstone contraption if you can avoid it, but away from any gold farm for sure. And if you know what chunks are, then make sure to not place this gold farm in the same chunks as any other gold farm. The reason for that being that this farm generates a lot of scheduling updates called pending ticks, and if there's too many in the same chunk, then things will break and it may endanger your world. 
All right, let's get started. So you want to start off by making a column of scaffolding. You don't have to use scaffolding, but I like scaffolding because it is practical. I like to go at least 10 blocks up, but you may want to go up a little more or maybe a little less. And the reason for that being is that because the storage goes underneath, you might need extra space since, well, making the storage is up to you. What you want to do next is check your cardinal directions. That means north, south, east and west. And the reason for that is that the zombified piglins will always spawn on the south side of the nether portal. Or if it's facing the other way, then it will be spawning from the east side. You can use a pumpkin to find the directions. The little pumpkin stem here will always point to the northwest. So this is northwest, north and west. Which means the zombified piglins will always spawn here, which is east or south. Alternatively, you can look in your coordinates. If the third number, this is the Z coordinate, goes in the negative, then that is north. And if the first number, that is X, also goes in the negative, then that is west. So you want to build this farm facing north or facing west. For this tutorial, we are going to be building it facing north. So that would be right here. If you have a pumpkin, you can just follow this exactly. Or if you would prefer to build it east facing, then you can just build it like this. So grab a few blocks and bridge about three blocks out. And you want to place down your chests like so. Like I said, this is only a reference storage design. It's not much of a storage at all. So you can either design your own or look for other designs. But if you're interested in a storage design tutorial, then let me know in the comments. Continue by stacking up higher with your scaffolding or your ladders, whatever you prefer. And what you want to do is that you want to place some blocks around the hoppers just like so. Not included in the materials lists because you don't need them after the farm is done or these fences. You just want to place them down after you place down your rail and the minecart on it, the hopper minecart to be specific, then you just nudge it in that corner and then you can get rid of that. Next, just surround all of this with solid blocks. You can take this one out and then you want to place some salt blocks in these locations. So this one will have a gap here. Behind every one of the salt blocks, place a repeater. All of them are in one tick and behind the repeater, just place a piece of redstone dust. Then you can close that up. And next, you take a piston. And on top of each salt block, place a piston. Now we can start to build our ground level. So this will be just a tiny platform. Of course, you can expand it however you like. Next up, you just want to take out these three blocks right here. And what we're going to do is that we're going to place some sticky pistons. You can take out this piston as well and just place the sticky pistons right next to the scaffolding or your ladders if you prefer ladders. Place a observer facing up, a solid block. And then what we want to do is place a block right here. You can do this by just bridging out from here and then placing a block here. And a redstone dust on top. This is going to be the toggle for our trident killer. You can then come back up here and place a lever. When you turn it on, as you can see the pistons start pushing. Then we can place back the piston we took away. And that will be our trident killer. Then just take some salt blocks and put them all around here in order to close the thing back up. Then you want to place a salt block behind each of the pistons that will protect us from any potential zombified baby piglins from glitching out because that does happen sadly and it is quite annoying. Next up, place your door facing this way. Then what you want to do is get some glass around here. Then you can get up there. You want to take a temporary block and then place some more glass over here. From here, we can stack up 19 blocks. Once you're up here, grab your slabs, place both of them on these blocks respectively. Then place your solid blocks as following. Not there. And then you want to place your buttons in those little gaps. On the right side, you want to go up by nine blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And on the left side by eight blocks, which is 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then on the right side, you want to place three blocks at the end and on the left side, two blocks at the end. Next up, just take your glass and you want to place them as following so that all of the water stays contained and that none of the zombified piglins escape the water stream. And then what you can do is take your two water buckets and place them on each end. And that will create a water stream, which is the exact length to cover this right here. Next up, let's build our portal. So you want to place one block on each end, and then you want to go 21 blocks in that direction. It should line up perfectly with the other end with an extra block. So it should be 21 blocks long, and then you want to stack up 21 blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Then we place our extra block. And then you can just bridge out so that it perfectly matches up with the other end. And if you did everything correctly, it should be a perfect square. Although it might be a little hard to tell if you're at an angle like this. But if you did in fact build a max size portal, then you would have used 84 obsidian, which is 20 plus 64 right here. Down here you want to grab some more glass and make it another block taller. Next up, let's work on the portal breaking system. We want to go up by three blocks on each side and then place a dispenser facing inwards. After that, we can remove the bottom two blocks and let's stack up a little because we want to go out by two blocks again. Then we can take our redstone dust, place three redstone dust like this. Then you want to place some more salt blocks right here and right here on both ends at two more blocks then we can cover up that dust with more salt blocks now it's time to grab your repeaters and you want to place the repeaters facing this direction on the left side this is important place some more redstone dust here and then the repeaters facing the other way so make sure that the repeater that is facing this direction which should be south or east, is on the right side. Then you can place one more dust here. Let's get rid of our temporary blocks and bridge out two blocks like so. Then grab your sticky pistons, your observer, and your salt block like this. Then we want to bridge out eight blocks from there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can get rid of those blocks. And what we also want to do is that we want to take our torch, place it on the side of this block right here. Also make sure that these blocks are solid blocks because they do need to power what's underneath them. And then we can place our piston right here. This will keep the portal off, well most of the time anyway, when the farm is not in use. That way it will reduce lag you get from just looking at the giant portal. The next step is to place the powder snow inside of the dispensers. The powder snow is necessary because powder snow doesn't flow like lava or water does, yet it can still break a portal, so it will be much more stable. And if you accidentally log out while using this farm, which you shouldn't do by the way, it won't flow all over the place. So on the first dispenser that will be triggered, which is the one closer to the sticky pistons, you want to place the powder snow bucket. And on the other one, you want to place the empty bucket. And it is important to do it that way, otherwise the farm will not work properly. Next up, just place some redstone dust on all of the blocks. And then what we can do is head back down. Now you want to build the toggle for the farm itself. So you want to place one salt block right here. On the side of the block, a lever. And we want to build a torch tower now. So in survival, of course, because you cannot actually stand on the torches, you will not be able to stack up. So if you want to build a torch tower, I recommend you stack up like this. Then place some of the torches and the solid blocks. And rinse and repeat. If you did everything correctly, then placing the last torch and the last block will cause the braking system to activate. But it won't do anything yet because we haven't made the lighting system yet. Once you're back up here, you can head to the backside dispenser and you want to bridge out 14 blocks. 
Once you're at the end, you want to bridge out by one block, and then another 14 blocks in that direction. And then you can close this back up. What you want to do next is take your observers, just place one facing that direction, and all of the others can be facing the other direction. These observers are necessary because they will update the lava and cause a weird behavior that will accelerate the rate at which the lava flows. And if you didn't know, we need this to relight the portal as fast as possible. After that, just place saw blocks like so. And once we have that done, then we can place doors all facing this way. The doors act as sort of a lighter for the portal, but they will never catch on fire themselves. We're almost done. So on each side, you want to go out by two blocks like so. And then place your lava source next to those two blocks. And you can get rid of those blocks now. And that will be our lighting system. Now I'm just going to show you that it does in fact work. So let's take away this torch to simulate us flicking the lever. And it does blink and the dispenser will break the portal as fast as it can. And as you can see, all of the zombified piglins fall down into the killing chamber where they will be killed by the trident. But we don't have a trident placed in there yet, so let's stop that real quick and I'll have to get rid of all the zombified piglins. Now the last two things are throwing in the trident, closing that back up, holding the looting three sword, and flicking that lever. I have mob loot off right now, let's just turn that on. Do mob loot true. And let's also turn on the trident killer. As you can see, they will all get killed. And let's stand right here. If we go on game mode survival, we'll get a lot of XP. Let me just get rid of my XP. Oh, that's not what I was trying to do. Minus 200 levels. And yeah, the whole farm works, so that's great. So that's about it for this tutorial. Let me know how building this farm went and if you like it. And if you're having any trouble, then you can join my Discord server and ask in the MC Help channel. And there are very helpful people that will help you there. But avoid pinging me because, well, I'm kind of busy. And I can assure you that other people are just as smart as me at handling this stuff. That being said, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I have a Discord server, so you may want to join that. If you want to, of course. Consider subscribing. I put a lot of work into these tutorials and all other videos. And of course, I have other similar content on my channel, so you might enjoy that as well. If you would like to support me, I have a Patreon, and I would very much appreciate your support. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you around. Bye!